Hello guys, it's Mandy Andy. Welcome back to my channel. So today we are going to be talking about Disneyland deaths. And while I was researching this topic, I found out a lot of weird stuff about Disney, but I'm not talking about every single death that has ever happened at Disney because there is a lot to talk about. So if you want to learn more about that, you should definitely Google it because there's so much stuff out there. So much scary stuff. Didn't know that could happen at Disneyland, but uh, it does. I wore my Disney shirt, my Disney Halloween shirt that my roommates got me, but you can't even see it. I'm really upset. So now I just look like I don't even match. I look like I'm in my pajamas, but whatever. Okay, let's get right into this. On April 22nd, 2003, a 36 year old stage technician fell 60 feet from the catwalk inside the Hyperion Theater, which is most famous for its Aladdin show and its more recent Frozen show. This stage tech did not regain consciousness and eventually passed away on May 18th, 2003, nearly 26 days later. OSHA eventually fined Disney $18,350 for safety violations following the incident. <sighs> yeah, I really, I really don't want to think about falling from a catwalk because I am deathly afraid of heights. So that just scares the crap out of me. Next is a death that occurred on a extinct Disney ride. In July 1974, an 18-year-old girl was crushed to death while working on Disney's then attraction, America Sings. The attraction featured a cast of audio animatronic animals, which sung songs while the audience rotated around the stage. She got in the wrong place at intermission and was crushed immediately. The ride had only been open for two weeks. The ride only closed for two days, so Imagineers could install breakaway walls for the future. Could you imagine just going to work and then just like stepping in the wrong spot and then just like dying, being crushed to death? Especially in Disneyland. Like, I would be so happy to work at Disneyland. And I don't think that I would want to be crushed to death. On September 5th, 2003, a 22-year-old man died from severe blunt force trauma and extensive internal bleeding after a train on Big Thunder Mountain Railroad derailed due to improper maintenance. The man hit his head after the first passenger car flew in the air, hitting the underside of the car. This was after the train had went airborne and hit the ceiling of the tunnel. On December 24th, 1998, aboard this sailing ship Columbia, which is located in Rivers of America, a metal cleat which holds down the sail tore loose, hitting an employee and two other park guests. One of the guests hit was a 33-year-old man who died from head injury. The incident was caused by an inelastic hemp rope that was replaced instead by a cheaper elastic nylon rope that stretched a little too much, tearing the cleat from the ship's wood. Disney not only got in trouble for going against their policy of restricting outside medical personnel in the park to avoid frightened guests, but they also made an untrained, unknowledged employee in charge of the ship while this incident occurred. This marked the very first death in Disneyland that was not caused by the guests' negligence, but instead caused by Disney's negligence. Disney was fined $12,500 by OSHA and settled a lawsuit with the victim's family and the survivors for a whopping $25 million. As for Disney's very first fatality in their park, this actually happened on the Matterhorn bobsleds. On May 15, 1964, a 15-year-old boy stood up, resulting him to fly out while the ride was in operation. The injuries eventually resulted in his death three days later. On January 3, 1984, a 48-year-old woman was decapitated when she was thrown out of the bobsled car and was hit by an oncoming bobsled nearby. The investigation found that her seatbelt was not buckled. The spot where she died is now nicknamed Dolly's Drop by cast members because the victim's name was Dolly. That's really sad. I mean, it would be cool to be named after something in Disneyland, but not a place where you died. After only being open for a month, the People Movers attraction suffered its first fatality in August of 1967 when a 17-year-old boy decided to jump between two moving cars as the ride was passing through a tunnel. He fell onto the attraction's tracks where an oncoming car crushed him and dragged his body a few hundred feet before coming to a stop. Again. Ow. 
Again, on June 7th, 1980, an 18-year-old male was crushed to death from trying to jump between people mover cars. This was very similar to the death in 1967 because it happened in the same tunnel. Okay, what? Why would you do that if someone already died there? I mean, I guess if you didn't know, but like, please don't do that. On September 22, 2000, a four-year-old boy fell out of the vehicle while aboard Roger Rabbit's cartoon spin and was dragged under the car, which caused internal injuries, cardiac arrest, and permanent brain damage, which resulted in his death nearly nine years later. And for my last death, on August 1979, aboard Disney's Space Mountain, a 31-year-old woman said she needed to get off the ride. While she was at the loading dock, employees tried to remove her car from the track, but instead accidentally sent her around the track again. When she returned, she was semi-conscious. She remained in a coma until she died one week later. Coroners reported she died of natural causes, which had been a heart tumor that dislodged into her brain. Those are just like really scary. Like, could you imagine dying at Disneyland? Like, yeah, I love Disney a lot, but I would never want to die in Disneyland. Like, even reading about these things made me actually really sad, and I feel like I'm going to think about those rides every single time I go on them. Okay, and while I was researching, I found this really weird story, and it didn't result in anyone dying, but I really wanted to talk about it because it was really, really weird. So a 22-year-old concession stand worker made a dry ice bomb, and detonated it into the trash can and he pled guilty to a misdemeanor. He was sentenced to 36 days in jail, three years of probation, 100 hours of community service, and was ordered to stay away from Disneyland for the rest of his life. Could you imagine being 22 and doing something that you thought was funny and stupid and being banned from Disneyland for the rest of your life? I would die. <laughs> that is the most random thing ever. Could you imagine like being in court and like having Mr. Walt Disney like coming? Okay, obviously it was not Walt Disney, but like an advocate for Disneyland like coming on like, I don't know, on stage, on the stand, on the stand and being like, we're gonna sentence you to never coming to Disneyland ever again in your lifetime. I would immediately burst into tears. I literally like wouldn't even know what to do. I would be so sad. I'd be like, I'm sorry. Like I was just trying to be funny. I was trying to have fun. Anyways, guys, that's it for my part one video of Disneyland deaths. If you want to see a second one, comment down below. If you like this video, go ahead and give it a like. And of course, if you are new to my channel, go ahead and hit subscribe and the bell icon to get notifications. I upload random stuff. I'm mostly a lifestyle channel, but I have more Disney videos coming. So make sure you're subscribed. Anyways, guys, thanks so much for watching. See you later. Bye.